All right, welcome back. In this video, we are getting started on the audio part of this project. And before we get started, I want to make sure that if you are following along with this series, if you have not already downloaded the assets, there is a link in the description of every video in this series. Over here in our project panel, down here towards the bottom, we have two folders for audio. One is called sounds and one is called music. These are specific to Construct 3 or Construct 2. I did not name these. These are built-in folders and there is a reason for that. And there's also a reason that there are one for sounds and one for music. And I'm going to go ahead and close that up. To explain the difference between the sounds folder and the music folder, I'm going to consult the Construct 3 manual. This can be found on construct.net. And once you're at this page, we will want to go to interface. And then down towards the bottom, we have dialogues. And then in that subfolder, we have import audio. And this is the import audio dialog. Lots of good information in here. So two things while we're here, way down here at the bottom, we have uh, import formats. Basically what Construct 3 does, it accepts these types of audio formats and then it converts them into a WebM Opus file. If you are using the audio files that I have provided, they are this top one. It is a WAV file. And what it will do is once we import it, it will convert it to the format that it needs to convert it to. If we scroll up a little, we have categorize audio files correctly. And this says audio files in the sounds folder are loaded completely before playing, but the audio files in the music folder are streamed, meaning the much smaller file size and much shorter tracks are going to be your sound effects. They take up hardly any room. They load very fast and it's easy on processing and memory. Music beds, on the other hand, can be a few minutes long and take up a lot more memory and can slow a system or a device down if it tries to load the entire music bed in before you are able to load up the game and, and play it. So what it does is it streams everything from the music folder. So that's where we're going to put our longer music beds and then we'll put all our sound effects in the sounds folder. Okay, I just wanted to explain how that works and to let you know that there is a difference between the two folders. And we can use them to our advantage to help the performance of the game. So for this video, we're going to get the sound effects set up. So if we right click on the sounds folder and select import sounds, if you have your assets open in a, another folder or window, you can highlight those files and drag them directly to this area here. It will work just the same, but for visual purposes, I'm going to select the import audio button up here at the top. And that'll open up a window. And I am going to be in the folder that I titled FX. Once inside the folder, we should have a total of 10 sound effects. Uh, we have a button push. This is for something we will create in a couple of videos from now. Then we have our coin collect, our death, three grunt effects, a landing, pop, spring, and success. So I'm going to just draw a box around and select all of those and hit open. And if you see, it happened really quick because they're very small file sizes, but it loaded them into Construct 3 and it encoded them to something that Construct 3 can read correctly. So now that everything is completed, I'm going to hit import and it pops it right into the sounds folder. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and import the music as well. So let's right click on the music folder. I'm going to go to import music. I'm going to go to import audio. And then in the music beds folder, we should have six. Uh, level completed, level failed, level play, level selected, map, and title screen. I'm going to select all of those open and you can see right away it took a significant amount of time more to get those loaded. Now it's still pretty quick but 
uh, when we put the sound effects in, it was almost instant. These took just a little bit longer to get encoded, but they're all completed, so I'm going to hit import, and there they are in our music folder. Okay, I'm going to close up the music folder for right now so that we're only dealing with our sound effects. So the first thing that I want to do for this is create a way that we can play a grunt sound when the player jumps, but I don't want it to be the same grunt sound every time because the game is centered around our character jumping. So there's a lot of jumping and to hear the exact same grunt sound over and over again would probably drive the player away. So I have set up three different grunt effects, but I want Construct 3 to randomly choose one of these three each time the player jumps. So we're going to do that through a function. So up here in our event sheets, and in our meta subfolder, I'm going to open up the functions event sheet and I'm going to right click, add a group, and I'll call this grunt sfx. And then we can right click down here in an open space, add a function, and I'm going to call this uh, jump grunt. Okay, and I will slide that up into our new group we just created. So to be able to set it up where we have three different options to choose from, I'm going to create a variable inside the function, which is called a parameter. So if we right click on the function, select add parameter, I'm going to call this grunt pitch, and it's going to be a number. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and we can walk through it once we get it all set up in the function. So if we highlight this whole function block and press B on the keyboard, it creates a blank sub event. And if over here in this area off to the left of it, if we double click on it, we can put something in that sub event. So let's go to system and I want to compare a variable. And that variable is going to be the grunt pitch. And when it is equal to zero, I want it to play a sound. So I'm going to add an action. I'm going to go to our input folder and we have our audio object for when we created the mute feature. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to pick play. And then I will find grunt effects one or grunt one effects uh, not looping and the volume I'm going to bump this up. It was kind of low when I edited it so it did need to be a little bit louder, I think. I'm gonna go with 16. And we don't need a tag for the sound effects because we're not going to need to reference them outside of the actions. I'm gonna hit done on that. And what we have is when this variable is equal to zero, it's going to play this effect. And we have two more effects that we want it to be able to access, so I'm going to highlight this sub event, this whole block, and I'm going to control C to copy, control V to paste. And then I'm going to control V to paste one more time. So we should have three total. In the second one, the middle one here, I'm going to double click, go into it, and change the value to one. And then the bottom one, double click, go into it, change the value to two. We can go in and actually change these as well. I'm gonna double click, change grunt one to grunt two. And down here, change grunt one to grunt three. So now each different variable equals a different file played. Okay, that's all we're going to need for that function. Let's go over to our project panel and make sure that our controls sheet is open. And we can open up our jumping group. Let's stretch that out. Right here is our jump action or our jump event and action. So this is where I want the grunt to be played. Add an action and let's go to our functions and grab jump grunt function that we just created. So here is our parameter that we created, that variable inside the function, the grunt pitch. And we know that we want either 0, 1, or 2 to play, but we want it to be random. We want the game to choose which one to play each time the player jumps. 
So we're going to use an expression, and that expression is called choose. And there it is. It pops up. It's built into Construct 3. Choose, and then in parentheses, we want to add the values. And that's going to be value 0, then separate it with a comma, 1, comma, 2, and then in parentheses. So now it's going to choose one of these three values each time this is called. So let's go ahead and make sure we have level 1 called up and preview that. And we'll see what it sounds like. There we go. Sometimes it plays the same sound a couple times, three times in a row or so, but then eventually it changes. And it seems like it's working pretty well. I'll exit out of that. And back in our controls and in our jumping group, I have another sound effect we can set up. And I'm going to place it in the jumping group, but I don't want it to be uh, in this block of code. So it's going to be its own event. So I'm going to add an event to jumping. And I'm going to go grab our player character. So sprites, objects, and then player. Hit next. I'm going to scroll down to collisions and say on collision with another object. And that object is going to be our collision floor. OK. Hit done. And when he does collide with the floor, I want to play our landing effect. But we have an issue here, or we will have an issue, because this is a triggered event. The game will run at uh, typically 60 frames per second, so 60 times a second it's going to check to see if the player is colliding with the floor. So basically it's going to play this sound effect over and over and over again uh, 60 times every second as long as the player is colliding with the floor. We don't want it to do that, so we can highlight this whole block, press B on the keyboard, that will give us a sub-event, click to go into it, go to System, and type out trigger once while true and then we can add an action to this sub event and I'll add uh, the input audio play and that's going to be landing effects not looping and this one ended up being a little too loud for my taste so I'm gonna go negative four and you might try all these out or try your own out whatever the case may be and see what the volume uh, needs to be on your end. So I'm going to hit done on that. We can play. And now we have a landing sound every time we collide with the floor. All right. That should wrap that up for jumping and landing. I'm going to close that up. And while we're in the controls, let's go down to player death. We'll open that group up. And this one's pretty straightforward. As soon as we collide with our death object, let's go to add an action in that collision check. Input, audio, play. And that's going to be death. And not looping. And the volume, this one got pretty loud. So I'm going to go minus 8. I'm going to slide this all the way to the very top of this event. Okay, I'll close that up and we can test that real quick. And we got jumping and landing. And it's kind of loud, but uh, I like it being that way because it's one, it's impactful, and it kind of goes along with the screen shake we have set up, I think, where it just kind of jars you when you're playing it. it. It surprises you. And we also have other sound effects, and we will have uh, music playing in the background at the same time. So it will get a little bit drowned out. I'm satisfied with that. Let's head over to our Objects event sheet. We'll start at the top. Let's open up Springboard. Pretty straightforward here, too. I'm going to add an action. Go to Input, 
audio play and the file is going to be spring effect not looping and i'm going to keep this at uh, its original volume level so i'm going to keep that at zero i'm going to hit done i'll close up springboard open up diamond so when we collect the diamond we have successfully completed the level so let's add an action input audio play and that is going to be success chime and that's not looping I believe this one was a little loud too so I'm going to go down minus 12 slide that up uh, just under destroy so we collect the diamond uh, we fire the particles then we destroy the diamond and we play the chime I'm going to close that up and go into coins so when we collide with a coin let's add an action uh, input audio play and let's go to coin collect not looping and this one let's go down minus six for me and I'll slide that up after we destroy the coin we're not using the button push one just yet the only other one we have not used is pop that is going to be located in our options so that is in our menus folder let's go to options and in our open and close options I'll grab this and stretch it out okay so up here I'm going to use this sound effect to uh, open up the cogwheel and then close it it probably doesn't make as much sense closing it but if we put it up here it's going to fire every time the player touches the cogwheel on screen let's add an action go to input audio play and pop one effects not looping and the volume I'm gonna bump this up to six hit done and that should be all of the sound effects except for our button push that we're not going to use yet so let's go ahead and test these out I'm going to preview the project that'll start us off at the title screen and I'll max this out so our cogwheel here has a little pop sound to it see it doesn't make as much sense closing it but I like the effect that it has when you open so that works we'll go to the map and let's go into the level and we have coins jumping landing our little spring I love the sound of the spring by the way and we'll just play this through make sure all our sounds are firing when they're supposed to and keep in mind music will be playing at this time as well so a lot of this will actually be kind of drowned out for the most part and let's make sure our little diamond works there we go all right I am satisfied I'm going to exit out of that and that is going to wrap it up for the sound effects we'll get to this button push sound effect a little later when we create that feature in the game in the next video we will uh, get the music beds in and in place that's it for now I'll see you in the next video don't forget to save